We have another incredible guest here. And first time we met, Sasha was in, wasn't it in Amsterdam? Is that it right? Was. Last year in Amsterdam. Amsterdam, where they're both speaking at an event. And then we end up on a panel together at an event. And I just have so much respect for this guy because he's young, he's hungry, he's smart, and he just, hustles. He's one of those guys that just executes. I remember I was talking to our good friend, Fraser Brooks, and Fraser was telling me how you were looking at creating this, this new course. I don't even remember which course it was or what. And he's like, within two weeks, he was done. I swear he had like 50 different classes and courses done. And him and I were both, you don't even know this story, but him and I both were just laughing. We're like, this guy just gets stuff done. So tell me if I'm wrong here, but you built your business. We're, we'll talk a little network marketing. We'll talk a little non-network marketing. But you built your business in 90-plus countries, six-figure earner by age 19, seven-figure earner by age 21. I mean, start shattering goals. And as successful as you are in your network marketing business, you have several other ventures where you're even more successful in which i consider a true entrepreneur and so i want to learn some of these these insider tips and strategies of what you do just to make things happen because you are definitely a go-getter so did i get all of that right yeah you did you definitely did Rob. all right i just wanted to make sure so real quick before we get into the good stuff what do you like to do for fun? I mean, I know it's fun for you to build your empire. I get that. So you can't say that. I get that. What do you like to do for a little maybe relaxed time or veg time besides building your empire? So funny enough, um, you know, my switching off is learning. That's where I feel, um, you know, I'm because I'm not creating. I'm not in the creating phase of actually doing the admin stuff or creating stuff. I'm in the phase of you know, absorbing and applying, but not really applying yet. So I love researching. Um, I love going out there and just being able to pick other people's brains. I love just having conversations and seeing where they are in life. And I, um, I play chess in life. So I play chess offline, meaning on a physical board when I was six years old. And then I play chess in business. So my life is a chess game. And, uh, you know, from a strategic point of view, I just love being able to just de-stress myself by going out because stress doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you're not financially secure. So you stress. Stress could mean that your body is moving so fast. So for me, my body is moving so fast. And um, I want to be able to make sure that every single thing I, I, I'm learning. I'm, a, I'm really and truly a student. Up until today, Rob, I'm a student of the world's teachings. I'm a student, and that's why with the millionaire student, I'm not a millionaire. I'm a student. Um, you know, I'm just learning to earn in life, and uh, that's how I switch off. What is, what does the average person make in South Africa where you're from? At least two hundred dollars per month. At least two hundred dollars a month. Exactly. So, I mean, my question. I'm just thinking about this is what's your excuse for all of you that are, are tuning in and listening? Because, I mean, one of the top tips for having success, as we've heard, is successful people take 100% responsibility. Oh, but Rob, you don't understand. My area is so, everywhere I go in the world, I hear that. My area is so different. My circle of influence is so different. Uh, my circumstances are so different. You don't understand. We had products backordered for five months. Oh, our services didn't work for three months. I've heard it, I've heard it, I've heard it. But even if it's true, giving that much power to the excuses is actually disempowering and going to hurt you. So talk to us a little bit about, because, I mean, besides your, your network marketing business is just absolutely blown up and all your other businesses, you've got a podcast, you've got the millionaire student. So in the millionaire student, whether it's this or that, the principles that you're going to teach for those that want to become successful. And I think it's important to understand this because a lot of people think, well, I, I don't even think about becoming a millionaire. It doesn't matter. The principles are the same. Read the book, good to great. 
and it talks about it really isn't that much of a difference. Good is the enemy of becoming great, right? So I want to hear some of the top success principles. If I'm coming to you as a student and I'm like, Sasha, and I'm crazy hungry, help me, right? I mean, I know you you work with Les Brown, right? You got to be hungry, right? Yeah, so, you know, with Rob, just let's take two steps back and realize that I came from Africa. And with Africa, we are used to working seven days a week. If there was an eight day, we'd be working eight days a week. You know, being able to have that delayed gratification, I'm so used to it. So with people in Africa, it's very difficult because we've got to cast more of the vision in life before they buy into the vision. But then there is that, you know, I want to get rich overnight and I want to get rich today. So that there is that expectation there. But the, the hard work, I, I did that. And that's why I created a tagline called work like you broke. Not being able to look left, don't look right, don't turn around, just work like you broke. Imagine yourself on a treadmill, turn that thing up to 15 on the speed and be able to just look at one foot in front of the next and that's it. You don't have the ability to turn around because if you do, you literally fall on your own face. And that for me was the foundation. For me, I, I, I always remember my earliest memory of life was when my parents got separated when I was two years old and the distraction they created for us, my sister and I was giving me personal development. So I started personal development at eight years old. I'm talking about 18 years ago. The books, the audios, everything you see today, I, I had that head start, that underdog advantage in life. But today when I mentor people and, and what I look in with regards to people is the ability to understand it takes 21 days to create a habit Nine, literally 90 days for a lifestyle, but 10,000 hours, 130 plus days to go out there and turn that habit into a value. And uh, for me, it was just making me understand that for every level that I go through, I need to make sure I, I'm fully equipped. My leadership level is ready to maintain, sustain that because whatever network marketing company you're in right now, it doesn't necessarily mean if you jump to another company, your life is going to change. Your problems are made for you. Jumping to another company, jumping to another industry will never change anything. Your problems were tailor-made and coded for you. Go through the problems rather than trying to divert the problems and rather than trying to change the vehicle, which will never work. So when I look at someone, I look at their ability to learn. Although I believe I have a little bit of success, but I'm always learning. I'm always picking the brains, the minds of the thought leaders of today. I don't care what industry they're in. When you break them down and you decode them, you understand there's a level of work ethic. There's a level of studying with self-development. You understand that every one of them are very coachable. They all have mentors in life. They're not going out there and you know, not listening to their mentors. They are articulating and emulating their mentors. And most importantly, they have one trait, humility. They are very humble. And, you know, uh, Rob, I learned when I joined Netto Marketing, I joined the industry of believing you got to drive a better car so people can follow you, live in a better home so people can follow you, wear the Rolex watches so people can follow you. And I had all of that. No joke. I had six figures at 19, seven figures at 21, and eight figures at 24 years old. I bought the president's home. I bought the BMW at 18, Aston Martin at 21, Ferrari at 23. I had all of that. But life hit me like a positive frying pan across my face and humbled me. So if you're writing down notes, anyone that's writing down notes right now, if you're not humble in life, you will be humbled by life. And I almost lost my life last year, February, when I smashed my Ferrari. And um, I had my mom in the car, and from that very moment, I was going to buy a Rolls Royce and a uh, McLaren in the same month. I never drove after the day. I got a few watches in the closet. I've never worn a Rolex or any one of my watches before that because I understood we get so caught up on, I need to impress people to join. It's a lifestyle. It's this, it's that. And, you know, when you buy that 3 Series, you now want to buy that 5 Series. Then you want to buy the 7 Series. When you buy that California Ferrari, then you want to buy the 458. Then you want to buy the 488. And there's always another level. But what I changed for me was the ability to learn. And I went back to the drawing board. 
I went back to the visualization, affirmation, the reading, the audios, the pod, just like what you're doing right now, Rob. That's what I went back to. And it, I actually went back into student mode and my top line in life really and truly elevated because today, anyone that's listening right now, your top line is someone else's bottom line in life. Your pinnacle in life is someone else's bottom line. So the minute you think, I've arrived, I've made it, there's someone else out there looking at you and saying, I've been down that road, that million that you're making, that's my bottom line, that's what I make per week or per month, I'm on that, that's my foundation. So um, I had to go through life experiences to make myself understand it's not about that. And um, I can't remember the day after my car accident where I bought a name brand t-shirt. I really can't. I needed to go through that. I re and, and some people need to go through it today. They need to be able to go through it in life to really and truly shift them and really and truly take them down the right path because we have two choices. We can go down the path of light or the path of darkness. And I was going 100 miles per minute hour down, down the wrong direction in life. So I had to make a U-turn, come back and make that conscious decision. Yeah, that's really interesting. A couple of different things that come to mind is the first thing is, is really people understanding internal versus external. If your validation is always external, as Sasha just said, it doesn't really matter. It's always going to be more and more and more. It's always going to be a bigger house. It's always going to be a nicer car. It's always going to be a nicer jet. It's always going to be a nicer vacation. And it's, it's not, it's, you have to interpret this. It's not saying that those things are bad at all. It's saying if your validation, right, sometimes that's something that you worked for and you said, okay, I earned, I'm rewarding myself. There's a difference, but your validation needs to become internal. Your self-esteem needs to become more internal, not external. Otherwise, it's always going to be empty, and you're going to keep trying to fill that void with stuff and things, and it's never, ever going to be filled. And then the next thing is when you talk about the ability to learn, I read this, I think, from John Maxwell, and maybe it was Talent is Never Enough. That's the book I'm thinking right now. Because I'm like you, I've, I've read now slash listened to over 1,100 books now the last 13 years. Like I'm obsessive. And then you add in podcasts and you add in notes and you add in like conferences and paying for coaching that I've done. Um, it's, it's just something that I, I absolutely love. I, I'm just like you. Like I get obsessed. I'm, I'm like, I'm excited. Like I'm excited we did this road trip. Um, we just did Newport Beach with my family. But a month ago we did Montana and we decided to drive. So it was literally nine and a half hours of listening to stuff. And I'm like, this is so good. And the kids would like try to talk. I'm like, talk to mom. I'm listening. I'm listening. Like, this is good stuff. But John Maxwell said the ability to learn how to learn is the greatest ability one can have. I thought about that. Wow. And he gave the example of Leonardo da Vinci and said he's the most talented man as far as accomplishments of sculptor, inventor, painter, scientist, and it was like on and on, things I didn't even know about Leonardo da Vinci. And then I started thinking about the most successful people I know, the reverse engineers. They just go figure out who's done it, and they reverse engineer it. So I now go on binges. This is one of my secret sauce, not really secret, right, but secret sauce tips for learning is I go on binges. So if I want to learn something like last year, I wanted to learn how to better maximize my energy levels. I spent two months, every podcast, every book, every article I could, and I just went crazy. I spent a month on sleep, and I just studied again. Every podcast, every book, every article, and I know you're the same. And it sounds so simple, doesn't it? But almost nobody does it. It's right. like, it's so simple. So I, I mean, I don't know. What else? But I love that as you went backwards of talking, okay, that's the first thing is, is you know, that, that ability to, to learn. And then you start learning, how can I learn better, more effectively? You know, when, when are my energy levels higher? All that stuff, right? So I wanna hear, that's enough of me. I wanna, we want to hear more from you. So I want to hear more of your principles if someone says, okay, I want to go to the promised land in my network marketing business. I want to become a top earner. What do I need to do? I'm teachable. Teach me. Teach me. So most people, I, I want to reverse engineer it because when I play chess, I like looking at the checkmate and then from the foundation of the game, don't worry about the brand. Don't worry about the brand. Don't worry about the Instagram and Facebook followers. Don't worry about all of that stuff. That's going to come. That's the light at the end of the tunnel. 
let's start off from the beginning of this chess game from the beginning of your career and let's start moving forward and you need to constantly have a list that never ends you know um, rob what i used to do is when i used to jump on a plane i never ever sat on the aisle and i never ever sat at the window i sat in the middle because i knew the minute i jump off that plane both of those people left and right i'm getting them both in the system i'm sharing the concept of my company you can share the concept of your company i wanted to build a relationship that's what i wanted to do and you know that's number one you got to make sure your list is totally endless every it's eight billion people on the world I don't want you to have that mindset of scarcity. Well, those are those people's. No, it's your people too. And here's, this is something that's going to trick people. I recruited 800 people in network marketing. 800 people. 798 came from social media. 798. I got two family members in my entire business. Two. My sister and literally my cousin. I don't have anyone else in my business that is a family member and the remaining people I've never met before network marketing. So a list that never ever ends. Continuously share, number two, continuously share your concept on every opportunity you get. Every opportunity. You know, you are a message away, a text away, a hand, virtual handshake. When this whole coronavirus is over, a physical handshake, you know, a, a elbow, by whatever it is, you are a simple connection away from people. I share the concept of my company. I want people to share the concept of their company with everyone. Now, I got rejected 145 times before my first person said yes to me. I was 18 years old. I had no credibility. I was sharing the concept and the information with my school uniform. People were going to say no to me. So, but I continuously did it over and over and over and over again. Number three, become a walking, talking billboard of your company. I was never scared to say I'm a part of the industry of network marketing. I was never, let me tell you something right now. I interview all these guys on my show. I interview all of them from Jack Canfield to Bob Proctor to Tony Robbins to Akon to Rick Ross. The majority of their following comes from network marketing. If Tony Robbins did not have a network marketing following, Tony would never be Tony today. If Bob Proctor would never have a network marketing following, Bob Proctor would never be Bob Proctor. That's their secret sauce. They, you know, the people who are two, three, four, five million social media followers and don't endorse the industry, they talk down in the industry. Well, here's the deal. They have an order to their following because they don't understand the majority, 51% plus is network marketing cut, it, distributors representatives affiliates in their following so that's number three number four you need to be able to go old school i don't take down notes on my phone i have an a4 hardcover book it's right here a black a4 hardcover book okay right here and i literally go out there and i'm writing down notes i'm literally writing down notes this is like my 10th one i'm writing down notes all the time. I'll tell you why. I go old school because that, that's what got me to where I am. So I went through 145 notes. I'm still writing our notes. From the front of the book, my name's list. From the back, I'm writing our notes. I'm studying. Number five, you know who's your mentor, guys? www.youtube.com. And you type in every person's name and you start studying. You learn. You literally learn. When you learn enough, you remove the L and you start to earn enough. When you learn enough, you remove the L and you start to earn enough. The more you learn, the more you earn. So you just learn enough. You watch the audios. When I was 18 years old, I pictured myself having a conversation with the higher powers and having a conversation saying, okay, cool. Here's the deal. How many audios should I listen to? How many books should I read? How many events should I attend? How many hours of videos should I watch? Well, what if the higher power said to you, well, you're going to watch, uh, you're going to attend 30 events. How quick would you attend 30 events? What if the higher power told you you're going to study 2,000 hours of content? How quickly would you go through 2,000 hours? 
See, there's no higher power that's going to tell you this is what you need to do to get here. So I just did enough. I just did enough. I went through the numbers online. I went through the number, numbers offline. I read the books. I literally just read. Now, here's the deal. When I sat down with Bob Proctor, he told me, Sash, I've been reading this, the, the Think and Grow Rich for 40 plus years. I've been reading one page for three months. I said, hold on, what do you mean? He says, he says, because people read the book from cover to cover to say they read the book. They don't read it and then apply it. So what most people do is they absorb and they store. I change that. I absorbed and I applied. Mm. Absorbed and applied. And then over and above that, what you want to be able to do is, those five things I just shared right now, you do it long enough. You just do it consistently enough. The reason why I created the Millionaire Student brand is because too many people came up to me and said, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a millionaire. My response to them is, you've got to be a student. You've got to stay in student mode. You've got to remain in student mode. And when you become a millionaire, you've got to remain in student mode to maintain and sustain it. Now, I will tell you something, and I'm, I'm one of those guys who I tell the truth. I'm sorry if the truth hurts you, but I tell the truth. $100,000 I made, I spent. A million dollars of 21 I made, I spent. Where did I spend it? I spent it on a lifestyle to get more people in. And most importantly, I spent it on this right here. So why did I spend it on books, audio, seminars, and enough stuff? Is because I understood if I buy a book for $20, how much can this book make me? If I go to an event and I spend $500 or $200, how much can this event make me? If I go out there and buy this phone for $1,000, how much can this phone make me? Well, let me tell you right now. Let me tell you whose numbers I got on my phone, which has made me way more money than the phone itself. So you got to start to look at every single thing you buy. How much can you convert it into monetization? How much can you absorb it and then literally monetize it? And, uh, I'm a student. I'm really a student, Rob. I'm studying every, if people who are listening right now on your podcast and they're not going out there, see, here's the deal. And I know are you guys, disclaimer, Rob did not pay me to say this. Rob did not tell me to say it. I'm going to tell you, if you don't own every single thing that Rob ever launched, that is your number one reason you failed. There is nothing that any of my mentors has ever launched that I don't own. I'm a product of their system. Any one of my mentors. There's nothing that they've launched. No book, no audio, no free book, no podcast, no course. I buy it all. But then I absorb it and I apply it. I don't buy it and put it on the shelf so it looks good. I pick up the book every single day. Tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up. I don't know what I'm going to read. Because it doesn't, I, I don't know, I might need leadership and go to 11 Rings by Full Jackson or some sort of a sales book. I might even go to some sort of a digital marketing book. I don't know what my mind needs for that day. So I pull it out. I read until I get inspired and I shift my mindset from a, you know, state. And then I go take action. I come back. When I'm back in that mindset, I go out and read again. And that's what it's all about. I love it. It's, it just gets me fired up listening to you. I mean, it's like just the all-out obsessiveness of learning and applying, learning and applying, learning and applying. And too many times, right, I'm really big on joking around about how people are doing the fake work, right, where they watch like 72 Facebook Lives and study the 92 ways the compensation plan pays, right? And it's like, how hard did you work? Oh, I worked so hard. And it's like, oh, what'd you do? And then they tell you, what? And they don't apply, and then they stick to at the very beginning of, oh, learning's good. And then they become obsessed with learning, but they don't understand if you don't do anything, you're actually not really learning it. You've got to do a combination of both. There was actually a study done for basketball players, and the same results happened for those that watched versus those that shot, meaning if you just went out there and you're practicing your shot versus watching on YouTube and studying it. And, of course, these are good players already. you got to practice. But the ones that did the best were the ones that did both, yeah. right? It's learn, apply, learn, apply, learn, apply, learn, apply. And for those of you that want to make it happen, you got to challenge yourself. you got to say, okay, how much am I really in these income-producing activities? 
And how much am I stuck thinking about it, not actually taking action as you go? I mean, how many, how many did you say again? You said 140 or 150? 145. 145 people rejected you? I Reject. mean, what? some spat in my face. Some told me, ridiculed me. I mean, I had it hard because in Africa, number one, majority of those people, they didn't have the money, but also I got their ego. They told me straight to my face, there's no way this kid's going to make it. I never had a plan B. I'm a straight D student. I couldn't go back to education. I burnt the bridge already. There was no turning back for me. It was network marketing or nothing for me. And when people, when, when people understand, can you become successful in network marketing? I promise you, you can become ridiculously wealthy in this industry. Ridiculously wealthy. The cash cow. This is the industry. Get your hopes up. You know how many people tell you outside of network marketing, don't get your hopes up? Yeah. We're both going to tell you to get your hopes up because it's all possible. Yeah, 90% of disappointment comes from unrealistic expectations, but who do you know has ever accomplished anything great without having those? So just learn to discipline those disappointments, manage those emotions, and just every single thing isn't, I suck at recruiting. Instead, you turn it into, I'm learning, I'm discovering, I'm becoming, right? and insert positive words in your mind where your brain starts focusing on figuring it out rather than focusing on how bad and how un unworthy you are and how you don't deserve it and all of that stuff. So last question for you. For those that, and this is one of my favorite three questions that I love asking all of the legends like yourself that I get to interview. For those that are just right now just stuck, they're stuck in their own heads, they're stuck in Maybe they're stuck because they just hit that sophomore slump where they had a huge infusion of momentum when they started. Maybe they've been stuck for three years just surviving, not thriving, and they're just hanging on. And you were just to give them this massive injection of let's go. Like they were working with you right now personally, and they said, okay, I, I promise I'm coachable. I promise I'm teachable. Give me a kick in the butt. I want the kick in the butt. I want the tough love. What would you say? Go get five personals. Go recruit five people. Send me a message. That's what I tell my people. Message me when you're done. So I want whoever's listening, go get five people and message their upline when they're done. And as an upline, you know what you need to say? Go get another five more people and message me when you're done. And then you do that over and over and over again. Ten times later, it's 50 people. I'm going to tell you a quick story. In 2015, I was 21 years old. I hit the pinnacle, the top rank in the company. In the, you know, for, and literally, when I hit the top rank, I got hit by the media with false allegations. I went from $35,000 a month to $5,000. I went from a team of $10,000 to a team of $500. I lost it all. The media literally took me out the game. False allegations ridiculed the industry of network marketing. Guess what I did? I added five new people. I took that five new people. I added five more. I added five more until one of them contributed with 10,000 new customers from losing from 10,000 to 500, from 500 today over 150,000 customers globally. That's so simple, that advice, because now rather than giving some long answer, it's like, go earn my time. You know yeah. what you need to do, and they'll figure it out. You talk to enough people, you're going to find people that are interested. you got enough systems with all of your Facebook groups and Zooms and tools these days that it really the excuse is just your fear, your lack of vision, right? And so go find five people. I love that. It just simplifies the whole process. Everything else works right within that. And it's like you keep doing that, I and mean, that's really the name of the game. People don't like hearing that it's a numbers game. You feel like it's insensitive, but it's call it whatever you want. It's a people slash numbers game. It's the same thing. It's not being insensitive. It's just that's the reality. That's how you treat real businesses. And you've got to treat it like that. Don't treat it like net lottery ticket marketing, net hoping, net wishing, net looking around. Treat it like net work marketing, and it will treat you like you want it to treat you. It just it just takes time. And some of you will be faster, some will be slower. But uh, I just want to say thank you because we've been we've been planning this for a good three four months right yeah i know and it's we crazy. finally made it happen right we circled back around figured out to get each other's phone numbers on whatsapp and so now we're 
we're good. We're on getting buried in Messenger, but we'll have to do a follow up on this. I'm just so yep. excited for my audience to be able to hear your fire, your passion. There's no excuses for them. You've grown up in South Africa and dealing with so many rejections to start. And so I, I think that's empowering. And then I love the whole training on the ability to learn and what to do and how to learn. And then the simplification at the very end, go find five, go recruit five. That's it. Make it happen. So where can everybody find you? Your podcast, your your Tinder, your Pinterest, your <laughs> your your Facebook, your Instagram. Where's the best place? I mean, they can go to www.winwithsession. So not lose with session, but winwithsession.com. Um, everything is right there. Um, I have a 97 steps to earn your next million ebook. It's totally free. Go get that there. Um, but most imp that's 97steps.com. But most importantly, add me on Facebook, add me on Instagram. But just remember something. Um, here's your there's here's your mentor. Rob's your mentor. I mean, I can add value, but Rob's your mentor, and we're working together to help you take your business to the next level. So Google, type in the millionaire student, type in Sashin Govender, go to Instagram, win with Sashin or 97steps.com and uh, Rob, I truly appreciate you having me on. You are truly a legend, my man, and I just can't even wait to watch you the next decade as you're just getting warmed up and started. So it's going to be fun. We'll keep collaborating, masterminding, networking, and making things happen. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it.